I'm so glad you've come back. So, a lot of people have their favourite Christmas films and certain films they'll watch every year. Um, mine, top of the list, is The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, and I remember finding out years and years ago that Tim Burton got the inspiration from a poem which was written. I believe, I believe he wrote it. Um, and I then was fixated on finding the poem. And I did. And I read it. And I fell in love with the poem. Um, so I'm now going to share that poem with you. So this is The Nightmare Before Christmas. It was late one fall in Halloween land, and the air had quite a chill. Against the moon, a skeleton sat, alone, upon a hill. He was tall and thin, with a bat bow tie. Jack Skellington was his name. He was tired and bored in Halloween land. Everything was always the same. I'm sick of the scaring, the terror, the fright. I'm tired of being something that goes bump in the night. I'm bored with my lip with leering my horrible glances and my feet hurt from dancing those skeleton dances. I don't like graveyards and I need something new. There must be more to life than just yelling boo. Then out from the grave with a curl and a twist came a whimpering, whining, spectral mist. It was a little ghost dog with a faint little bark and a jack lantern nose that glowed in the dark. It was Jack's dog Zero, the best friend he had, but Jack hardly noticed, which made Zero sad. All that night and through the next day, Jack wandered and walked, he was filled with dismay. Then deep in the forest, just before night, Jack came upon an amazing sight. Not twenty feet from the spot where he stood, were three massive doorways carved in wood. He stood before them, completely in awe, his gaze transfixed by one special door. Entranced and excited, with a slight sense of worry, Jack opened the door to a white windy flurry. Jack didn't know it, but he'd fallen down in the middle of a place called Christmas Town. Immersed in the light, Jack no, was no longer haunted. He had finally found the feeling he wanted, and so that his friends wouldn't think him a liar, he took the present-filled stockings that hung by the fire. He took candy and toys that were stacked on the shelves, and a picture of Santa with all of his elves. He took lights and ornaments and a star from the tree, and from Christmas Town sign he took the big letter C. He picked up everything that sparkled or glowed. He even picked up a handful of snow. He grabbed it all, and without being seen, he took it all back to Halloween. Back in Halloween, a group of Jack's peers stared in amazement at his Christmas souvenirs. For this wondrous vision, none were prepared. Most were excited, though a few were quite scared. For the next few days, while it lightning and thundered, Jack sat alone and obsessively pondered. Why is it they get to spread laughter and cheer, while we stalk the graveyard spreading panic and fear? Well, I could be Santa, and I could spread cheer. Why does he get to do it year after year? Outraged by injustice, Jack thought and he thought. Then he got an idea. Yes, yes, why not? In Christmas Town, Santa was making some toys. When through the din, he heard a soft noise. He answered the door, and to his surprise, he saw weird little creatures in strange disguise. They were altogether ugly and rather petite. As they opened their sacks, they yelled, Trick or treat! Then a confused Santa was shoved into a sack and taken to Halloween Town to see Mastermind Jack. In Halloween, everyone gathered once more, for they'd never seen a Santa before. And as they cautiously gathered and gazed at this strange old man, Jack related to Santa his masterful plan. My dear Mr. Claus, I think it's a crime that you've got to be Santa all of the time. But now I will give presents and I will spread cheer. We're changing places 
I'm Santa this year. It is I who will say Merry Christmas to you. So you may lie in my coffin, creak doors and yell boo. And please, Mr. Cause, don't think ill of my plan, for I'll do the best Santa job that I can. And though Jack and his friends thought they'd do a good job, their idea of Christmas was still quite macabre. They were packed up and ready on Christmas Eve day, when Jack hitched his reindeer to his sleep coffin sleigh. But on Christmas Eve, as they were about to begin, a Halloween fog rolled slowly in. Jack said, we can't leave, this fog's just too thick. There will be no Christmas, and I can't be St Nick. Then a small glowing light pierced the fog. What could it be? It was Zero, Jack's dog. Jack said, Zero, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? And to be so needed was Zero's great dream. So he joyously flew to the head of the team. And as the skeletal sleigh started its ghostly flight, Jack carried cackled, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. T'was the nightmare before Christmas, and all through the house. Not a creature was peaceful, not even a mouse. The stockings all hung by the chimney with care. When opened that morning would cause quite such a scare. The children all nestled so snug in their beds, would have nightmares of monsters and skeleton heads. The moon that hung over the new fallen snow cast an eerie pal over the city below. And Santa Claus' laughter now sounded like groans, and the jingling bells like chattering bones. And what to their wandering eyes should appear, but a coffin sleigh with skeleton deer. And a skeletal driver so ugly and sick, they knew in a moment this can't be St Nick. From house to house with a true sense of joy, Jack happily issued each present and toy. From rooftop to rooftop he jumped and he skipped, leaving presents that seemed to be straight from a crypt. Unaware that the world was in panic and fear, Jack merrily spread his own brand of cheer. He visited the house of Susie and Dave. They got a Gumby and Pokey from the grave. Then on to the home of little Jane Neiman. She got a baby doll possessed by a demon. A monstrous train with tentacle tracks. A ghoulish puppet wielding an axe. A man-eating plant disguised as a wreath. And a vampire teddy bear with very sharp teeth. There were screams of terror, but Jack didn't hear. He was much too involved with his own Christmas cheer. Jack finally looked down from his dark starry frights and saw the commotion, the noise and the light. Why, they're celebrating. It looks like such fun. They're thanking me for the good job I've done. But what he thought were fireworks meant as goodwill were bullets and missiles intended to kill. Then amidst the barrage of artillery fire, Jack urged Zero to go higher and higher. And away they all flew like a the storm of a thistle until they were hit by a well-guided missile. And as they fell on the cemetery way out of sight, was heard, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Jack pulled himself up on a large stone cross, and from there he reviewed his incredible loss. I thought I could be Santa. I had such belief. Jack was confused and filled with great grief. Not knowing where to turn, he looked towards the sky. Then he slumped on the grave and started to cry. And as Zero and Jack lay crumpled on the ground, they suddenly heard a familiar sound. My dear Jack, said Santa, I implored your attempt. I know wreaking such havoc was not what you meant. And so you are sad and feeling quite blue, but taking over Christmas was the wrong thing to do. I hope you realise Halloween's the right place for you. There's a lot more Jack that I'd like to say, but now I must hurry, for it's almost Christmas Day. Then he jumped in his sleigh and with a wink of his eye, he said, Merry Christmas, and he bid them goodbye. Back home Jack was sad, but then like a dream, Santa bought Christmas to the land of Halloween. So Jack got Christmas in the end anyway, even if it did come at quite a price. I hope you enjoyed that one and maybe have a think about watching The Nightmare Before Christmas if you haven't seen it before. 
I think it still holds up quite well. I see it's boring. 